Welcome to my dad and Kelly. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. This video is designed to show you some key pharmacological um, medications, especially cardiology and the side effect, the main side effect or certain things you have to know. So this is the problem. I've given you five questions. You have to select all that apply. I'm using class manual scoring. That means you choose an answer that you're confident. If this is an exam and there's five different questions, um, if you think this is right, you pick it. If you don't, don't guess, just let it be. But I want you to think about the question and you see that the answer choice will pop out to you like a candy, right? Who do you see first? Who need priority intervention? That means somebody who is taking certain medication and the second part of the question is worrisome, okay? That means you divide the question into two. The first portion is the issue. And then the second, what are you concerned about? So what do you think? First patient, the client was giving what? Atropine, right? For bradycardia. So atropine for bradycardia. Now, when you scan them, bladder scan, they have 500 ml of urine. Well, what does that mean? Atropine is what? It's an anticholinergic, right? What does the anticholinergic, what do they do to you? Okay, dry mouth, right? They give you dry mouth. Right, and they dilate your pupil, so they worsen your glycoma. They cause urinary retention, right, and they cause constipation, right? Constipation. Among these four things, which one should you be more concerned about? That's the what the question is asking you. If I give you atropine and you have constipation, uh, I'm not worried about you. Okay, constipation, I'm not worried about you. If you have urine retention, I'm not worried about you. I'll give you some uh, portfolio and pull it out. And after your urine, your retention get better. Dry mouth, you're going to, I'll let you do what? Suck on some candy, sugar-free candy. But dilating your pupil is the most important for any anti magic medication. This is more serious because if you have glycoma, I'm going to worsen it. Therefore, if you have atropine and I, if, uh, I give it to you and you have bladder uh, scan of 500, yeah, it's not something if I have these five patients, I'm going to see you first. I know I'm worried about it, but I got to check among these five patients who need a priority intervention. This should not be my first answer. I'm not going to worry about it. This is an expected finding. A client on levostatin and a CK of what? 15,000. Levostatin is what? It's a statin, right? What is the biggest medic problem with statin? Okay, they, uh, if you have videos that you can you can look in my website and that talks about HMG CoA reductase. Basically, this is the um, side effect of every statin, okay? And uh, everything is included over here. They have a muscle problem. They have a uh, optic problem. They have a glucose problem. They have a liver. So the age is the liver, a pathotoxicity. So they cause this liver. They have muscle problem. The R, HMG CoA reductase. R is the rhabdo. Okay. G is a glucose problem. G, C is a conjunctivitis. All these things. And then, uh, um, a is teratogenic, like you can't have it when you're pregnant. So all of this are worrisome, but the number one is muscle problem and what? The R, okay, HMG CoA, so M and R, that's muscle problem and rhabdo. When you're in rhabdo, your CK is greater than 5,000. This patient's CK is 15,000. Therefore, I'm worried about it. I got to see this patient. A client with the platelet of 70,000 while on, on an ozaparin. And now they're giving what? A pisipam and rubber, rubber rosopam or dagatrobam. What do you think? I'm on platelet. I'm on uh, an ozaparin. My platelet went down to 7,000. Now it's been changing to a pisipam. These are factor 10 direct inhibitors. Will you see me? 
No, you should not see the patient. Despite that, they played let it 70,000. When they played it with 70,000 because of the enosaparine, that is the side effect of enosaparine. Enosaparine is an heparin derivative. Therefore, if you give heparin to any patient, the platelet go down. This platelet is less than 1,000. That's why you have to see them initially. So they saw the patient and they change it to a pixipam or the zabans, okay, rafarozabans or dabigatran. All these things is what you need to put the patient on. Now the patient has been placed on this medication, there is no agency. We're treating the patient now. Therefore, we don't need to see number three. A client on clopidogrel, okay, this is and using a rosa blade to shave during morning assessment. You have to educate this patient. What is clopidogrel? It's antiplatelet problem, right? If you're taking it, you have bleeding risks. You should have what? Electric shaver, not what? Rosa blade. This patient is going to bleed. We need to see this patient. A client with the history of head injury two months ago, now with ischemic stroke and giving ataplast. Think about it. These things, the, the number five, you have to know all the contraindication and indication for um, ataplex. Yeah, if you have stroke, we'll give you ataplex to open it up. But this patient has what? Head injury two months ago. There is contraindication for use of ataplex, which is it's a clot buster and use it for stroke. What are contraindications? Any surgery in your head, okay? Any surgery. Less than three months, yeah, you're not going to get it, okay? Any previous head injury, you're not getting it. If you have AVMs, atrial venous malformation, you're not getting it. If you had aortic dissection, you're not getting it. If you have uncontrolled hypertension, you are not getting it. All these things you have to know, these five things you have to know, and that's what they trick you all the time. Patient just had a head injury, trauma two months ago, he's not getting at the place. So if he's been given at the place, we need to see this patient. So this patient is in trouble, is in trouble. A client with a head injury two months ago, and now with this chemo stroke giving them, they're going to bleed to death. So for these questions, today, two, four, and five need to be seen. Prioritization. By using your pharmacology, cardiopharmacology to help you find and figure it out. Um, but like I said, for this new generation question, if you know the answer, you pick it. If you don't, you know. So there's three answer choice here. Okay. And you have five distinct um questions. If you pick more than three, you're going to get less than three. Okay. You want to get all the three points. If you feel like you only know two, yeah, pick two answers that you write and you may get all of them right. Okay? So that's that. What else do we have? Number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Same thing. Who do you see first? Which of these patients are you going to see first and who is a priority? Um, who do you want to see? A client with renal disease an avid tobacco and caffeine user. That means they have renal disease, and all they do is to smoke and drink caffeine. What is renal disease? It's a vasospasm disease, so vasospasm. So the vessels go into spasm, and then they, they, they are, uh, fingers and toes become blue when they are exposed to a strain temperatures. Because of that, you tell them not to uh, expose themselves into ex ex extreme temperatures or stress when they are stressed. Anything that will put them in that situation will cause problem. Tobacco, okay, and ca caffeine will cause physical constriction and that will lead to what? Uh, um, decreasing blood flow to the extremities. And that is a problem. And that will worsen caffeine and tobacco, worsen their problem, worsen their vasospasm, and that causes your problem. So you teach these patients to avoid caffeine and tobacco. So I need to see this patient. 
a client with peripheral artery disease, PAD, and elevated leg when in a sitting position. Think about it. Peripheral artery disease, this is the leg, and you have blood flow going down. The problem they have is blood flow is decreased, okay? So whenever their leg is in the dependent position, it's good. This is good for them. If you elevate their leg, their leg become taller, color change. So we call it dependent wimble and elevation with color and uh, polar. So I want you to keep your leg what down every time you have peripheral artery disease because the more your leg is in a dependent position, the more blood flow. This client is elevating their leg when they are in a sitting position. They do not get the teaching appropriately. Therefore, you need to see. Like I said, these questions is designed to test your knowledge. It's all content, content, content. And you see that this is wrong. That's how you answer selector or apply question. Your content is a risk factor, it's a teaching, it's education. This is the education you provide to the patient that you should not elevate your leg when you're in a sitting position. I want you to keep it in the dependent position. Therefore, I need to see this patient. A client with peripheral venous disease and severe brown pigmentation of the lower extremities. What do you think? Peripheral venous disease, right? What is their problem? Blood is going to the leg too much. Therefore, blood pool in the leg. When blood pool in the leg, what happens? It creates, it, it pull into the tissue and it creates edema, right? Their skin becomes thick, right? And you see a lot of edema. Um, what happened? The tissue become really thick, and the, because blood, the hemoglobin in it, basically seed into the skin, and the color change. They have what? Brown pigmentation in these patients. That is why you need to elevate the leg to send the blood out to the heart. Therefore, edema of the skin, skin being thick, and the um. In the color of the skin, having brown pigmentation is an expected finding. I don't see this patient. That is normal for them. A client with a new onset AFib, atrial fibrillation, he has a heart rate of 115 and a warfarin initiated. Think about it. AFib, I have heart rate of this, and then they started warfarin. This is a problem. When you have new onset AFib, what is the number one priority? My number one priority is to do a rate control. They're going to ask you this question all the time because you trick uh, students and nurses. Number one priority is rate control. I need to bring your rate down and control it. Then after that, I give you anticoagulation. So if I have AFib, new onset, and my heart rate is 115. Please bring it down. Don't give me warfarin. Therefore, we need to see this patient. A client with VTAC without pause, and the nurse put the sync mode on. Think about it. What is the issue we have here? I have VTAC, and I have no pause. So this is the way you should think about it. When you have VTAC, there's two ways you can go. Either you have a pause or no pause. If you have a pause, yeah, we, give, we control your rate. If the rate is not being controlled or you have symptoms, yeah, then we do what we call synchronized cardio version, cardio version, and this is where we put the sync mode on. Okay, if you have no pause, okay, that means VTAC with no pause is the same as VFib. And what do you add, what is your treatment of VFib? Is defibrillation. It's different from what? Cardio version. Defibrillation, you don't need to do anything with the sync mode. If you put a sync mode, you're causing problems. So you don't need to put a sync mode. We don't have to synchronize anything. 
we have to shock you right now. So this nurse needs some intervention. Um, we don't need to put a sink mode on for that. So this one, you have to see, you tell the nurse here, you don't need to put a sink mode, we have a problem. So for this, we have to see a six, seven, nine, and 10. So this is the way I want you to start thinking when you're doing pharmacology. What are the ways they will trick me? What are the, these are concept. I put it together to like show you how they can take cardiology question and just throw you off. But guess what? It's plus or minus. You're not going to get zero. The lucky thing about this next generation, you're not going to get zero. You get a partial credit. How do you claim your partial credit? It's by answering those you are 100% confident. Never guessed anymore. But I know you know the content, so I want you to get all the four points right. Okay, this is the end of it. Um, expect more of this and subscribe to get this videos uh, uh, for me. Um, check my channel. There's a bunch of it there if you're struggling with content. I like pharmacology. I like selected apply. So I will slam you guys with that. Anyway, take care of yourself and have a good day. All the best of luck. Bye-bye.